Ma'am, I have a question about Islam. Yes. My first question is, why do you believe Muhammad is the prophet of Allah? So the way we do this, if that's okay with you, yes. I'll give you a couple of, I'll give you two minutes. You make two your minutes. case, okay? And then I'll have two minutes, okay? And then I'll do make my case. I'll okay. keep the timing. Now you get it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. That's not funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um. So I'll keep the timing. So let's see why Mo do you believe Muhammad is the prophet? Because I believe where is the clock? Yes. Just a moment. Just a moment. Where is the clock? <clears throat> okay, clock is here. Yeah, make yeah. your case when you are ready, man. Okay, and uh, I believe Muhammad is a prophet from the God uh, because he is the last prophet and has been sent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he was uh, completing, you know, and uh, all the prophets, what they left, like, it looked like a... Uh, it looked like a building left some stone that stone is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he could it. Because in our Quran it says Khatam al Nabiyin. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the end of the messenger has been sent to this world. He was completing the other prophet starting from our father Adam at the end Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's no another prophet coming in this world. So we have to say to the people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this Quran, Kuntum khayr ummati nukhrijat linnasi ta'amruna bil ma'rufa tanhawna ala munkar wa tu'minuna billah. We are the best nation has been Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to this world. So we have to say to the people that Islam is the last religion all over the world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mercy for all of the world. He's not sent by sword, he's not by sent by killing, he's sent by mercy. رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So he's the last prophet and, 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 and the other prophets, and Isa, Musa, all the prophets, they are also, and uh, is named in our Quran, and they was in Muslim. They was Muslim, Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah uh, With Hadr Ya'qub al-Mawt He said to the people What do you do from the past? He said to the people He said to the people Ibrahim and Ismail And Ishaq is the one And we are the Muslims So all the prophets are saying We are uh, an, 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 an Muslim And all the surah in An'am And also in, in uh, Hajj And uh, Surah al um, Surah Al-Zumar and Surah Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, all those surahs. Your time is up. Okay. I have to, was it advised not to come to the park by the um, counter-terrorist police? So I simply asked the question, why do you believe Muhammad is the prophet? Be careful of So, what is the reason why she is believed Muhammad is the prophet? Did you hear the reason? Because Muhammad apparently lost prophet. That is the reason. That is just very, very bad argument Muslims are putting forward to get forward. But it's still Muhammad. Ma'am, ma'am, you are cut. You are not listening to me. I will, I will restart. I will restart, and I want you to listen because I listen to you. I know Islam doesn't teach any manna. Um, your prophet didn't teach any manna, especially your prophet disgraced the woman. But allowed me to speak since this is not Sharia corner yet. So I asked the question, why do you believe Muhammad is the prophet? You gave me reason because Muhammad is the last prophet. You gave me another reason because Muhammad was mercy to the world and your side note was Muhammad is also the continuation of the previous prophets. I think that is one of the worst arguments I ever heard of. So I look at the Quran and I don't see Muhammad fulfills any criteria Muhammad says yes I will fulfill in surah 3 verse 81 he does not do that that's the first point second point you identified Muhammad is the best mercy to the humanity I wonder what is the definition of the mercy in Islam is it chopping people's head off is a mercy that's Muhammad did to Banu Kureza is it or oh, is it mercy that you rape people in front of their husband is it mercy that you teach the husband to beat their wife 
is it mercy that you tell the husband you can enter your wife however and whenever you want? Is it the mercy that if your husband divorces you, you go and sleep with stranger and then that stranger divorces you, you come back to your first husband? Is that the mercy? Or is it mercy that you order killing of a woman who is just breast sucking, suckling her son? Is that the mercy? That clearly not the definition of the mercy in Oxford Dictionary, but I would love you to unpack that for me. You expressed that um, Muhammad came as a confirmation of the previous uh, prophets, and you identify those previous prophets as Muslim. I would love you to show me from the previous books. When did Adam say Shahada? I would love you to show me from the previous books. When did Hosea say the Shahada? My time is up. You are, when you are recording. Okay, he's not recording. He's, he's recording. recording. Okay. It's not about being recorded, man. Please make your case on his own. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I told you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sent to the mercy of over the world. That is not something you can hide it in your, you know, like the sun. When the sun comes, you can put in your hand like this, to, not to see the sun is clear or not. You can do it. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have got, we have got 30 juice, we have got 114 surah in the Quran. All those things have been telling us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been saying Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mercy all over the world. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the last religion. And there's no another prophet, new prophet is coming after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you read correctly, if you read correctly Quran and understanding very open mind and open your heart, you can see how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mercy. But I can't do for you, if you just want to refuse, refuse, I can't do anything for you to understand how Islam is wonderful, how Islam is beautiful, how Islam is calling you to the paradise, to the Jannah. That is calling you something you can't even imagine how bad that is beautiful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yuqbala min. And our Quran has been said, Woman yabtabi gayr islami deen and fella yuqbala min. Woman yabtabi gayr islami deen and fella yuqbala min. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unacceptable. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept. Only religion has been accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. And Islam, woman, you have to be Islam in If you go to the another religion without Islam religion, that's you're going to be khasir. Khasir, you're going to be loser. You're going to be lose the paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been creating the hellfire and the paradise. Now they are ready for us. Your time yeah, is up. They are ready. I find it a bit amazing that Muslim woman at speaker's corner who identify not herself only a Muslim but who also engages with Islamic Dawah simply gives me proper examples for the definition of the mercy simply able to deal with the basic arguments I put forward. Let me bring them up once again. You expressed how wonderful, beautiful Islam is. Is it beautiful when your prophet ordered his man to rape the woman in front of their husband? Is that the definition of the beauty? Would you want, would you want Muhammad to come to your house today and then say, I want to rape you in front of your husband? Would you want today Muhammad to turn up to your home and then say, actually, I want to have you for three hours for sex and then I will pay you for five pounds for that. Is that the Muhammad who is the beautiful and mercy to the mankind? Is that the Muhammad who ordered, like, you, in somehow it seems to me that intentionally you did not deal with any example I put forward. And I am very disturbed because as a Muslim, while you believe your prophet is the best example to the world, mercy to the world. Just your prophet even disgrades you. 
your prophet, you know, you talked about, oh, there is hell and there is heaven. Your prophet simply said, majority of women are going to be in hell. Why? Do you know why? Because once a month, you have your period. Therefore, Allah thinks you are deficient in mind and in your religion. Place he offers you is hell. That is not mercy to at all, let alone. That is not any good example to humanity. Please do respond to examples I gave it to you in my previous talk. My time is up. Okay, thank you very much. I don't have, you, did you say any evidence that uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been, has been raped someone? You don't have got any evidence. And we don't have got, if you say to me, we have got in your Quran, in that ayah, said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I raped in the front of us, that raping someone, I didn't, you didn't tell me anything. You, didn't, you don't have got any reference for that case. And things have been, you said, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said all, almost the women and uh, the women are in the, most of, most of the women in the hellfire. And Allah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, make a charity, give a charity, women, why they are not, you know, and, 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 and most of the women in the hellfire. They are always, you know, if they, if they don't, respect their husband and don't go to the another man when you marry in islam when you marry you have to stay with your husband only to your husband not going other boy or other guy no that is haram and also uh, rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said make sadaqa make sadaqa because the woman all, always you know as you can see the woman allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to be covered our body if we don't cover our body, that is going to go hellfire. And Allah, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, رَأَيْتُمْ لَمْ أَرَى نِسَاءً أَخْرِ زَمَنِ يَأْتِينَ نِسَاءٌ كَاسِيَاتٌ عَائِرَاتٍ مَائِلَاتٍ مُمِلَاتٍ رُسُونَ كَأَسْنِمَةِ الْبُقْتِ الْمَائِلَةِ And also the woman always get into the, and, and to the man make zina with the other, other man, and, and, and she, she always making the man to come to hell. She making makeup, she making naked, not wearing nothing, and the man is coming the street way. Because the women are, are, are coming to the man that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been sent, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give a charity. Your give time a charity. is up. I find it's a bit amazing that while men and wives supposed to be faithful when they are married, I find it's a bit amazing it is only women who cannot go out and have sex with others while men goes out and simply sleeps around. Surah 424, please read it. And also read Surah 5 verse 87. I find that is very much, very much amazing. Woman is the one who's supposed to be faithful, yet man goes around and thinks, yeah, it's simply okay to sleep around. It is woman who's supposed to give sadaka, sadaka, sadaka. Why you've got to do, you know, why is that sadaka for? Because once a month, once a month, you bleed. Once a month, you have your period and Allah placed you to hell because of your period. Because of that. Isn't that amazing? When you have your period, you can't even fully worship Allah. So now, let me give the references. I am disappointed that someone who is engaging with Dawah at Speaker's Corner doesn't even know Surah 4 verse 24 and Surah 5. Doesn't even know about the story of Banu Kureyza. Doesn't pretend. Protense. She doesn't even know about Surah 2, 223, where husbands simply have sex with the wife, however, whenever they want. Today, that is called rape, and you go to prison for that. But good thing is, your prophet is already dead, so he can't do that. But followers, he put it in the Quran that his followers 
should able to do so. I am still struggling to understand what kind of person are you simply identifying your prophet as a mercy to the humanity while he was so much dangerous. Okay, and you said uh, I'm not educated about what I'm talking about and that I'm very uh, sorry about that. Our man, a Muslim man, doesn't allow to go around with other man, with the other women, only allowed to marry four women. Mathna wa thulatha wa Only four women. Four women. More than four women he can't marry. But in, in, in the other one, in the other religion, the man can have only one wife and he can have hundred girlfriend go sleep with them. Because that is going to be, you know, it's not healthy. But when you marry, when you marry, like a, like a man, if if you don't take care, only only just one, you stay with one. If you take care of all those three other women, you can marry. If you can't responsible, take that responsible, the other woman, you can't marry in our Islam. And we are not allowed our man, Muslim man, to go make zina, make zina. Zina is haram. To have a girlfriend is haram. To have a boyfriend is haram. And our movements also is haram to shake the man, to join with the man, to make her naked. We are wearing hijab at the top, at the bottom. We don't allow to see only just the face in our hand. That is only allowed for us to see us. The other one we have to cover. That is Islam. Islam is wonderful. Islam is not, do you know, is the most of the people has been getting the illness, like AIDS, like the, all the sickness, because they are doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, stay in that. Don't go, this is the red line. This is the red line. The man, if he want to marry more than one woman, he can marry four, not more than four. And the woman, she, on a woman, she can stay only just one. Your time is so, up. Thank you, thank you very much. You take my time. I answer all the questions. I find, I find this is very much disturbing. I, I find this is very much disturbing. So, as, thank you very as, much. Are you going to walk away? Yeah, I haven't because, finished. Right? You started. I am making take, my conclusion. Take, if that is the conclusion. Week, week, because I have to invite the other people. Of course, please, 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 please. There is you no need for me to wait two Only minutes I didn't for come, me to make I, the conclusion. I didn't come back argued. I, I, I'm not arguing to you, but I'm telling you the truth. Let me, let me, let me respond. I find it is, Ma'am Shushna. I gave you time to speak. Can you shush, please? Thank you very much. I give you time to speak. So. I find it a bit amazing. I find it is very much amazing that Muslim woman expressed how sad it was for Muslim men to uh, uh, marry only four wives, only four wives, only four wives. Of course, his prophet was able to have sex with, have sex, ex, have sex with all of his wives. And how many wives he had? 13. And he was able to have sex with them, nine of them or 11 of them, according to the Islamic tradition, in one night. So people like this today should go and get, see some counseling. Why? Because that is very, very bad habit. From one room to other room, you meet for your sexual desire. So that is the first point. I find, I find, she, a uh, Muslim lady was so much concerned that there are the people who has got only one wife. Sir, how many wives have you got? One wife. Are you sad that you've got only one wife? Muslim woman so much concerned about you, you had only one wife. You, had to be, you are, have to be faithful to only one wife. And then you could, <laughs> of course, of course, she simply thinks, oh yeah, you've got only one wife, what you do is you go out and get girlfriend according to other religions. I am not aware that Judaism is teaching that. I am, I am not aware that Bible is teaching that. 
It is Islam is teaching that we didn't get to hear the ideology. Islam is teaching that why with Surah 4 verse 24. So she didn't want to read it. Let me read the Surah 4 verse 24 for us. Um, I hope it's here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Quran, Quran, Quran. Surah 4, verse 24. Actually, she's lucky. Like, yeah, oh, it's in the Quran. Let's get the Quran now. So once I finish, I'll give you a chance to speak. Just give me a second, I'll just make the conclusion. So Surah 4, verse 24. So she was talking about, you've got only limited amount of the wives, therefore you go around. See where this ideology comes from. The book called Quran, this is what it teaches. And also forbidden to you are all married women, except those your right hand possess. This is the declare of Allah upon you. And lawful to you are all others behind this, that you seek them, in, you seek them with gifts, your property desiring chastity, not unlawful sexual intercourse. So for whatever you enjoy from them, give them their due, Com compensation. Isn't that amazing? Muslim woman simply says, oh poor man, he had only one wife, therefore he goes out behind other girls. That's Quran says. It's not only you go behind other girls and then have them or woman, but also what you do is, you have to pay them for the pleasure you receive from them. That's disgusting and ugly. And in 21st century, I find it is very much disturbing that Muslim woman is simply, simply trying to justify that. Bad and bad. Once again, Islam is false religion, Muhammad is false prophet, Quran is false book, and Islam is very dangerous. Yes, sir.